And welcome back to News On. Gas shortages are on the rise along the East Coast after the cyber attack that took place earlier this week. And we're now learning that the Colonial Pipeline has resumed operations, but that gas shortages could continue for several more days. Joining us live now to weigh in on this issue and so much more is CEO and founder of the Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Also with us, former Obama campaign director Robin Byro. Good to see both of you. Uh, so, as we mentioned, we're expecting the president to address this issue any minute from now. So we will go to him live when that happens. But a lot of Americans uh, seeming to panic, especially in states like North Carolina. And then you have people filling this up. And for people that are old enough to remember, this starts giving them flashbacks of those Carter years. Uh, so want to go to that. Uh, Robin, uh, what do you anticipate the president will say? And what does he need to say to calm fears? To calm fears, Miranda, he's got to say a couple things. He needs to say that, that A, we don't negotiate with terrorists. These were cyber terrorists. They wanted a ransom in exchange for not hacking the, the cyber threat here. Uh, and we didn't give it to them. So look, the pipeline did shut down for a few days. There is a shortage of gas, but it's back up and running. Please don't hoard the gas. And if you do, do it safely, put it in a safe container. Please not bags and long laundry baskets like we're seeing on Facebook. Uh, there needs to be some sanity here because these people are going to win the Darwin Awards, Miranda. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I think we can all agree on this, even though this is a bipartisan panel. Please do not fill up a plastic bag with gasoline. <laughs> Right. And don't put Tide Pods in your mouth either. That was a crazy while exactly. ago. Never understand that one. So, so Melissa, um, on a more serious note, there are a lot of Americans are concerned, though, because we've seen lumber prices going up, gas prices that were going up even before this hack. Uh, again, the president expected to address this. So what do you anticipate we will hear him say? And again, same question to you. What should he say? I have no idea what Biden says, but I will say one thing. I read this morning in Bloomberg that they did pay the hackers. So even though it's reported they didn't, I read in Bloomberg that they did. I think this is problematic. One thing I think he should say is whether or not the ransom was paid, because it's really poor if they did pay it and to get it back on. And I think that there's a possibility they did because Bloomberg reported it. The fact is that this is really a bad time for gas prices to be going up for consumers. Why? We're headed into the Memorial Day in two weeks. We're headed into the summer vacation season. I have friends and my parents right now that are on vacation that have to drive home from Florida all the way back to Pennsylvania, and they've got to worry about getting gas or what they're going to pay for gas. This is not a good time of the year for prices to be going up. And right now we're seeing actually Chevron stop falling today. And so you're seeing a negative reaction across the board, really in the market this week and gasoline prices. I think people are concerned about inflation and gas is just one of the things that is going up in price. All across the board, you're seeing inflation right. and many other products and services. Yeah, I, so going to that part, uh, you know, Robin, to the, the point that Melissa's making, and, and you know, I know you brought up Bloomberg. I always want to make sure that we confirm something, but you're right. I think the sure. president does need to address that. I see Robin, I see you nodding your head on that. but. You know, again, aside from this cyber attack, we do need to have some some protections in place. Uh, as I mentioned the other day, I was a consumer investigative reporter. This has been a concern. This isn't new. Um, this has been around right. for a long time. But what is appearing to be new is, uh, you know, these these prices that we're seeing when it comes to lumber. I mean, I'm seeing reports that it's almost doubled uh, since Biden took office. And gas prices, as I mentioned, Robin, they were going up, inching up before this hack happened. So again, do you think the president needs to address this? Because it is a real concern. Yes, these are concerns. And lumber prices in some areas are actually tripled right now, Miranda. So it's, it's a concern and it's gonna affect new construction and slow down some of the economy. Now, one thing that I've gotta say is that this pipeline is privately owned. Chevron is one of the companies that owns it actually. Uh, and it's owned by a lot of pension funds. So. I, I think the president and the administration needs to look at the fact of, of you know, were, I, I applauded President Trump, former President Trump, for a lot of the deregulation. But did that, did the deregulation maybe, maybe make it easier here for this private company to get hacked? Uh, because this is an infrastructure mm -hmm. problem. They need to make sure that infrastructure is protected. And militarily, look, I'm a veteran. We've been trying to, to look out for cyber threats for years. 
Uh, but we can only do so much against private companies, Miranda. You bring up uh, an interesting point. Melissa, would you like to respond to that? Well, I will say one thing. Trump would have gotten involved with this days ago if Trump was still president. And if he hadn't, people would have been on top of him criticizing him every single second on the news. So I think the Biden's, Biden's administration hands off when this first started was not the right approach. And whether they really ended up getting involved in the end to re resolve this, I don't think that they did. So I think that it is okay sometimes for the government to get involved in things like this where you have food, gasoline, or even people heating their homes. Remember when they had the thing with the windmills, which happened with the ice storms in Texas? So it's okay sometimes for the government to get involved if it's gonna help resolve the situation. And I don't think that they took action here. And if they did, it wasn't fast enough, or you wouldn't have people putting gasoline in plastic bags okay. like Rob said, oh, which is great. Yeah. All right, so so fair enough. Uh, in interesting uh, perspective there. You just heard Melissa, I just wanna say for the record, a Republican saying it's okay for the government to get involved even if it's a private entity because of the impact it has on everyone. All right, so we only have a few minutes remaining in this block, but I do want to get to this because I don't see a lot of people reporting this. Um, so as we mentioned earlier in the show, President Joe Biden actually resuming construction of the border wall in Texas. Let me just say that again. Resuming construction of the wall at the border in Texas. This was something, Robin, he said he was not going to do. That was one of his yep. promises. We're seeing it happen. Not a lot of mainstream media outlets reporting this. I don't see this going over really well with the progressive part of the Democratic Party. Oh, you are right, Miranda. This will not go over with my peers on the on the far left. Uh, and look, I'm, thank you for having Nick on. That was a fantastic guest because he brought up something that I've been saying for years that no one else brings up about Joe Biden voting for the Secure Fence Act. And look. The, rea the truth is, I call out hypocrisy on the left or the right. President Obama built 649 miles of border fencing. President right. Trump built 450. Uh, my party was jumping up and down about that, but it's hypocritical to do so because we have always been for secure borders and Joe Biden is not gonna suddenly change his course of action. He's been for secure borders for years. So, you know, it, it is what it is. We'll have to answer for this possibly in the midterms. Yeah, and I think if memory serves me correctly, wasn't it President Obama who used to be referred to as deporter in chief? <laughs> you are exactly correct, Miranda. Just throwing that out there. All right, uh, Melissa, your reaction to this? Well, I'm for the wall. I think the wall needs to be there. I used to live in Arizona. There's a huge problem with, with people bringing people across the border illegally. They call them coyotes, where they actually ransom and take people, children, many of them women and children across the border and they make their families pay them money to bring them across into the, into the U.S. border. I think it's a problem. I think the wall needs to go up and continue. And as far as Biden goes, uh, you know, he's flip-flop on this. I'm sorry, but he has. He is going to take heat from his party on this. Whether or not now the wall actually continues to be built or he flip-flops on this two or three months from now, I don't know. Overall, though, any person that lives in this country that's lived through 2020 here with COVID should not be for not having the wall. I mean, why don't we want people coming in here when we're still dealing with the pandemic? We have a problem. We're trying to cut down on COVID cases coming in. None of these people are getting tested. We don't know if they have COVID or not. All right, we are gonna have to leave it right there, but still to come on this edition, uh, we wanna have our panel stick around because we were talking about security there. Uh, there's actually been more of an influx of people trying to illegally cross our border. We're gonna talk about that. And we talked about cybersecurity. Well, apparently, um, you know, as we mentioned earlier with Nick, other people are worried about the security of the United States, including around 120 uh, retired military leaders. They're actually concerned about the mental health of our president. We're going to ask our bipartisan panel to weigh in on that issue. Also, uh, we're going to be talking about Republicans launching an all-out assault on sweeping voting rights legis legislation rather during a committee hearing that shined a spotlight on the increasingly charged national debate over access to the ballot. That's all coming up in this edition of News On.